On today's show, we're celebrating some super smart, very driven, ridiculously talented kids whose art will prove that age ain't nothing but a number. Lots of people don't really know how much time you spend working on the smallest detail. I started using my dad's backup camera when I was five. I guess when I was seven, I probably took it more seriously. Drag is about surprising your audience. Hello and welcome to CBC Arts Exhibitionists, the TV show obsessed with Canadian art and Canadian artists. I'm your host, Amanda Paris. Today we're shining the spotlight on some pretty brilliant kids. From a ballet dancer, to a wildlife photographer, to a drag performer, these are young people who don't just have talent, they have single-minded passion and awe-inspiring drive. Our first stop is Winnipeg, where we're about to meet a young artist named Tyler and a furry creature named Toxie in a magical community space called Art City. I'm Tyler, I'm 13, and most of my art is costume making, drawing, and digital art. Anything can be art. Costume making is an actual professional art that you can do for a living, like in Hollywood and stuff. I learned how to make my first fursuit by going on YouTube. And then I just like kept on watching and watching and I just watched them for like hours straight and I, I didn't stop. I'm just gonna jot out stuff lower. Yeah. Okay. Toxy was the character that, like, it was sort of a secret character at first, and I never really told anyone, and I would just, like, draw Toxie in my school books. And, like, I just decided to turn Toxie into a suit. So first, I would start out by gathering most of the materials, like I've gathered the foam, the hot glue, and then I started sculpting them by like measuring my head. And then I sort of like sculpted the snow, and then the cheeks, and then the ears. The ears is probably like the hardest part. Cutting this part. Take a Sharpie, and you draw on the foam where you're gonna put everything, and then you just sort of like glue it all together. My style normally changes a lot, like when it comes to drawing and fursuit making. I very like the cute and the dark stuff. Anime sort of also inspired me, because like most of the eyes that I make are like very cartoony. This Luna plushie sort of like looks like the style of eyes that I do a lot. Like the expression that you can see with the mouth combined with the eyes, the cat's happy. When I was about like three turning four, like I sort of like found out about Art City. I thought it was great because I used to like always just scribble together art. And then I decided to start sneaking in with my brother and lying about my age, saying I was six, even though it was obvious that I was four. And like they didn't really care because I was like decently well behaved. I mostly go to Art City every day because sometimes I don't have enough material at home or I run out of space in a sketchbook. When that happens, I like come here more often, especially when it comes to my fursuit making. Normally when I'm walking around the street with it on or I'm taking it somewhere and I'm holding it, people are like, oh, hi, furry. Or like if I'm wearing it, people normally ask me for pictures or they like honk their horn at me saying that's cool. I normally get a lot of attention for it. I feel that anyone should be who they are and I want everyone to be treated equally, no matter race, gender, what they do for a living, or everything about them. Like, I feel that everybody should be accepted. I am planning on trying to, like, my own business for fursuit making, since I've progressed so much in under a year. And I'm learning new things every day. <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to be cute, fluffy stuff thing? Every episode, we introduce you to a new exhibitionist in residence. This is an artist who's loaning us some of their bite-sized work. 
just short enough to squeeze between our stories. This week, I'm happy to introduce you to Sitji Chow. P.S. He's an adult, but we loved his animation so much that we had to include him. Hi, my name is Sitji Chow, and I'm an artist from Vancouver, BC. I'm your exhibitionist in residence this week. You'll be seeing GIFs that I made digitally using Flash, Photoshop, and After Effects. I still paint each frame individually to give it a handmade quality. Um, and a lot of these projects were done just for fun in my free time. So check it out and thanks. Our next artist, Lilia Grey Eyes, was born to be a dancer. It runs in her blood. Her parents are both renowned dancers and now Lilia has taken up the torch. She trains daily at Canada's National Ballet School where she spends hours a day mastering her pirouettes and jetés. And then she has her math homework. I first started ballet when I was two years old and I just kept dancing. I fell in love with it. My name is Lilia Graz, I'm 13 years old, and I'm a ballet dancer. At the National Ballet School, I'm currently in grade eight. I start off with academics at 8.15. After academics, we go to ballet class. Right now, I'm working on finessing my movement, especially my port de bras Some days you may lose your motivation to continue training and you kind of just want to, you know, sleep or take a break, but it takes a lot of discipline to push through and do it for yourself. Some of the things that I love most about ballet are the reward you get after you accomplish something that you've been working really hard to try and improve. This year I am training 19 hours a week, so it's a lot, but I think it's definitely helping me improve. I love the city, but sometimes it gets a little hectic and busy and you just kind of want to go to some place that's, you know, quiet and calm. At the cottage, I love to practice my art, my visual art, which is something that I've been doing for a long time and I also really love. And here I was working on how to draw the movement and the body um, and stuff like that. I also love to play with my dogs, Teddy and Scout. It's just really fun to spend time with them and play. It's really an enjoyable time. I think dance is an art form because uh, just like in paintings and sculptures, you can express yourself through your movement and how you dance and really tell a story. Well, this is the variation from the ballet Pharaoh's Daughter. Okay, Mr. Wigro, lead it. In October, my teacher, Martine Lamy, introduced us to the variation. And the most challenging part is probably having the stamina to get through it. The menage at the end of the variation is where you do turns in a circle, and I'm trying to have enough stamina to you know, sustain my balance and core. Lots of people don't really know how much time you spend working on the smallest detail to make everything look unified. One thing that people who don't know the dance world don't really know is that dancers are really funny and um, it's a lot of humor that goes into it and it's really about enjoying it. Dancers are motivated and hardworking and it's something that really translates into everyday life. 
My future goals for ballet are to become a professional dancer and uh, dance in a professional company. I just really love ballet. Coming up, we'll meet a 13-year-old with a knack for silent observation, a sharp eye, and a deep love for the animal kingdom. Kids find it hard to sit still, but that's not the case with our next artist, Josiah Lonstein. He sits outside for hours and hours studying animals, understanding their body language, deciphering their sounds, and trying to capture the perfect shot. With his camera, Josiah has been able to give people a window into the world he loves and the unique way that he sees it. I'll let Josiah tell you more. My name is Josiah Lonstein. I am 13 years old and I'm a wildlife photographer. My most favorite part of being a wildlife photographer is being out in the wilderness and getting to spend time with all kinds of animals. I started using my dad's backup camera when I was five. I guess when I was seven, I probably took it more seriously. To be a wildlife photographer, you have to have a lot of uh, patience for the like right lighting or finding the animal in the right spot. Also determination to keep going out day after day because you'll just keep getting better. As a photographer, you really have to uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. Bighorns are my favorite animal to photograph, where they live in the high country, in the mountains, because I love hiking, so it's, it's, it's just relaxing being out with them and hiking. During the late winter, when they come down for grass from the mountains, we're out there a few times a week. I'm always trying to figure out how I want the picture to look before I photograph it. I like hanging around bighorns because they're just, like, if you're relaxed, they're relaxed. Unless it's the rut, then they're a bit more skittish. You just spend a whole day photographing them and their environment. During the bighorn rut, all of the boys called rams come down and look for the look for the girls. I guess you would say they're competing, I guess, for the ewes. I photograph bighorns enough. I know how they react, like if they're more shy or if they're just don't really care about you. I was very honored to be named the Young Outdoor Photographer of the Year in 2014 for the photograph Bighorn Battle. and Wildlife Photographer of the Year for the third time with my picture, Raindrops. And that one is currently on exhibit in the Natural History Museum in London. In December, my picture opened on exhibit in the Royal British Columbia Museum and the Royal Ontario Museum. I'm really honored that my picture will be uh, seen by so many uh, people and that it's gonna be alongside a lot of photographers that I admire. Probably my best advice for anyone getting into photography would be just to photograph what you love. It shows in the pictures and always go out and take your camera. Hi, my name is Andrew Zito and today we're gonna make a planter with recycled skateboards.
Coming up, we'll meet a nine-year-old drag queen who is here to teach us how to slay. Drag is the place where multiple art forms come to slay. It's costume design, makeup, theater, and dance all at once. The work that goes into drag is no joke. Right now, we're going to Montreal to meet nine-year-old Nemis Melancon, who will show us just how much artistry and effort goes into the creation of his alter ego, Lactatia. Action! Hello, my name is Nemes. I am nine years old, and I am a drag princess named Lactatia. As Lactatia, I lip sync and I dance and I vogue and I I spin around in my poofy dresses. I just be nice and gracious to everyone. My interest in drag sparked when my sister, one day she came into my room and said, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Emma told me that this is this RuPaul's Drag Race thing and we have to watch it right now. When I was like one year old, my sister had like given up her tutus, so I had some tutus. A lot of them didn't fit me, but I danced around. I was using this dress to compete at, in the face category at the House of Horror Vogue Ball. I won the trophy. It was amazing, and I completely served this dress. However, I did not win the battle round. Cora did. Last year, I started taking voguing classes with Gerard X. Reyes, and I feel like that that was really a big turning point because I really love voguing. Oh my God, voguing is like weirdly hard to explain. It's, it's a lot about graciousness. A lot about flexibility, a lot about movement, a lot about lines, and a lot about majesticness. I wouldn't call getting into Lactatia a performance. I call it artwork. I pick out outfits and shoes and earrings and stuff like that. I said we were doing no eyebrows, just darker. And then we lay out the makeup, and my mom does my makeup. If I tell her, like, I want black yeah, makeup, yeah. or I want small eyes, or I want large lips, or I want deep contour, or I want no contour. And then we put outfits on and take pictures. Your hair looks really good in that too, by the way. So you should wear it like that from that one. So how is Nemes different from Lactatia? Um, I would say Lactatia is an alter ego to Nemes, but like Nemes isn't that different from Lactatia because Nemes vogue sometimes, Nemes poses sometimes, Nemes skateboards, Lactatia doesn't. Not yet. I'm a lot more sassy when I'm skateboarding. <laughs> you have to you have to push and you have to go down those high ramps and then you have to realize how cool it is and then you get better and better and better. Well, I'm Lactatia, I'm, I'm happy, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't feel that much difference because I'm still the same human being. Lactatia makes me feel confident and Lactatia makes me feel more open to people and Lactatia makes me feel gracious and beautiful and accepted even though in some places I'm not very accepted. I think that drag is about taking risks and pushing boundaries because people will think that you're going to wear something normal or people are gonna have an expectation of what you're gonna wear and you're gonna give them like something completely different. Drag is about surprising your audience. I don't see drag going out of a style, so I think like I want to be a teacher that just dresses up in drag, and if um, and if people don't like it, then they're gonna have to deal with it. Cut. If there's an artist you think should be on CBC Arts Exhibitionist, let us know. Send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Our handle is at CBC Arts. I'll be back next time with even more artists from Langford to Lindenberg. Until then, keep creating and innovating. But before I go, I'm gonna leave you with a time-lapse video by 15-year-old Madison Young from Windsor, Ontario. You won't believe that she made this drawing with pencil crayons. Peace.